thanks for tuning in guys. Here's how to groom your Woodle. All right guys, let's talk about the equipment. We need clippers, attachment combs, brushes, uh, some scissors, some nail equipment if you want it. And then we need to make sure to have our dog up on a safe raised surface. I've got this grooming table with a little grooming arm and noose that I have her attached to. And we're gonna go ahead and brush and comb the dog all over. Make sure to try to get all the mats out before you start your haircut. All right, we're gonna start uh, with our clippers. We're gonna go ahead and go with the direction of the hair growth. Sometimes dogs like to smell the equipment. <clears throat> I always let them do that. And then we're just gonna go with the direction of the coat. Now Mabel has a really thick coat and you can see uh, hair started bogging up in there. So you do need to check that if your dog's got thick hair and you're gonna need to clean that hair out. Otherwise it's not going to cut correctly. So you can use an old toothbrush to do that or I usually just blow it out. All right, so down the spine, we're just gonna follow the spine and go straight back with the direction of the hair. And again, the hair gets buggered up again, so I have to clean it out of there. Here's kind of a close-up of the side of the body. I just think it's important to show what it's going to look like. As you move over to the side of the dog, you're going to move with the hair growth, and so you can see I'm kind of angling down. And then for the sides, I'm going straight down. Now right there is called the tuck-up, and you want to be really careful of that spot. It's very easy to cut. And so you'll see in this shot here, again, I'm going with the direction of the coat. Really slowed the video down here so that you could see exactly what I'm doing. And right here in this tuck up area, I'm kind of going down and down the leg, down the leg and down on the belly because that's the way the coat grows. If you don't go the direction of the coat, then you're going to get a whole lot of lines. Once again, Mabel's hair all caught up in the clippers. Gotta clean that out again, and that's kind of typical for her. That's also why it's important to have a clean coat. A clean coat, you have less bogging. I had bathed her a couple days before this haircut, so that probably didn't help me. You can see that little tuft of hair on her rear end there. That's where I ran into a mat. If you're going along with your clippers and the clippers stop, that means you probably have a mat there. So it's time to grab the brush and give it a little brush through. Then your final step is going to be to back brush all the hair. So we're going to brush it in the opposite direction and to get a nice smooth look, we're gonna go ahead and clip again. Same attachment comb here. I'm just gonna follow the direction of the coat, go down the spine, down the legs, I'm going to give a close-up here um, in a minute or so on, on what to do with the feet. You can see I'm just kind of going down to the ankle and then I kind of stop. Um, and that's because I do the bottom of the ankles and the front legs in a separate way. But you'll get to see that here in a second. So again, I'm just following that hair, going down the rib cage and down the belly. Now I'm going to pull that arm kind of straight forward and do underneath her armpit and come back towards the belly of course, gotta give her a kiss here. Now I'm gonna ask her to sit down just cause it's a little easier on her and me to get the neck done. Um, I've got that noose kind of pulled up in my left hand and then I'm using the clippers with the right. You can see Mabel's gonna tense up a little. Her elbow is going back um, and she's pulling away and you can see I kind of shook her arm there. What that's gonna do is that's gonna relieve that tension for the dog. And so you'll see me do that a couple of times. The trick works great. If your dog is really pulling away, then, you know, move to the other arm, give them a break. Um, but there's this magical moment where when you're holding a dog and they pull and then they trust you to just go ahead and you do that little shake and then they trust you to keep holding their foot. So you have to find that merry little moment. Uh, here I'm just kind of going down the arm. You got to be careful of the armpit area and She was pulling there. So like I'm gonna do what I just said. I'm gonna move over to this other arm and See if she'll tolerate that one a little bit more 
Every grooming session needs to be positive. They have to do this for the rest of their lives, so you really want to keep it positive. And so short little intermittent clipping sessions are really best on different parts of the body. You can see she wanted to smell the clippers again, so I went ahead and let her. Gotta be real careful on the back of that elbow. You're not gonna use the clippers on the webbing that's on the back of the elbow or the tuck up area, which is where the hip and the rear leg meet. You need to scissor that. If you, you run that clipper there on that webbed skin, it could get cut. Same thing with the neck here, guys. A lot of dogs will have folds right there. And so you need to use your left hand to spread apart the skin on the neck because those folds will creep down into those clippers and get cut. Mabel doesn't have any folds, so I don't have to worry about that, but if your dog has neck folds, spread out the skin, lay it flat. She did have a little mat on her neck, so I did have to go ahead and brush that out. And then you can see I'm gonna back brush and go ahead and do the clip again. Time to do the other side. Same thing as the first side. I'm gonna run those clippers all over the body and down to the Achilles, and then you'll back brush and run the clippers again. The reason why you want to back brush is the same reason that you want to make sure to follow the direction of the coat. The back brushing is going to alleviate lines and so much more hair comes off. If you only do it that first time, then you're really not getting the full benefit of the haircut. You can see on her back leg there especially just how much coat comes off. I'm going to do a close-up of the back foot here. I'm going to back brush all of that and I'm going to run the clipper on the inside of the leg and all the way around. You're going to be really careful to not go over that Achilles tendon. Same thing as the tuck up, same thing as the neck. That Achilles could get caught in between the comb and be cut by the blade that's cutting the hair. It could cut the skin. And so we're just going to rotate around here and we're going to avoid the Achilles altogether. I'm going to pick up with my other hand and run down the back, but I'm only starting at the ankle. I'm not hitting that Achilles. Kind of moving her tail out of the way here to show you that's the area you want to avoid. I'm gonna move up to the front leg here and just kind of do a little bit more, kind of go down on the foot a little more so there's less scissoring on the foot. And you do need to be ambidextrous with your clippers because sometimes you're gonna to wanna to use your left hand to clip and sometimes you're gonna to wanna to use your right. Um, here I'm just kind of showing how to brush a foot. I start way down at the toes with my slicker brush and I slow this way down too. Feet are one of the worst areas for mats, and so you really want to make sure that you're brushing them really well. And then, of course, I'm going to go to my wide tooth comb and make sure I didn't miss any mats. I didn't get the best view here of scissoring a foot. I'm sorry, I'm still new to this, so at some point I will make a foot video. But I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim a round shape and it's pretty simple. Again, if your dog is pulling, which I'm gonna show her back foot, and she'll be pulling for that, I'll show you and talk you through what to do. Here I'm using a little pair of clippers just to trim all those little pad hairs. It's important to keep those trimmed too, just so that mud and snow and that kind of thing doesn't get packed up in there. Here's that front view again. I'm sorry I didn't get that good of a picture. I'm gonna trim around on the front and then I'm gonna trim the top hair kind of round with the foot. So here's the back foot. This is her least liked foot, so she always kind of pulls away. You can see when she pulls away, I'm gonna move my scissors away from her foot, and that's for safety reasons. A dog could kick back and slice their pad open on the scissors. So we gotta be safe at all times. If they're moving around, jiggling around, which they are gonna do, you're gonna wanna move those scissors or close the scissors and get away from the foot. Just go ahead and trim that the rest of the way around. And now the final little details. We're gonna back brush with my wide tooth comb and I'm gonna scissor anything that's sticking out weird because believe it or not, the clippers didn't get it all. 
And so um, for me, I almost always have sticky outies on the legs. Uh, it just seems like I can never get the clipper just right. And so your area might be a different area, but no big deal, just back brush and comb with the wide tooth comb and scissor off whatever's looking weird. All right, now the head. You're gonna start kind of at the middle of the head and you're gonna go around in a circle. You're gonna go to the back, you're gonna go to the sides, and then you're gonna also do the front. Now I had just done a face video for her, so her face is not very long. Now this is personal preference. I like to run the same comb down the sides of the face because I find that she mats up very easily on the sides of her face under her ears. And so I like to just keep the maintenance easy, and clip it short. If you want a big full round head, you're not gonna run that clipper down the sides of the face. You'll leave it and just scissor it. Okay, so here we are, we're doing the beard. You can see I combed it forward and did some scissor trim and now I'm gonna comb it backwards and forwards and you can see all that long hair. And this is really, guys, this is just about combing backwards and forwards until you get a shape that you like. Um, some people like square, some people like round. I prefer round, so that's kind of what I'm doing here. And again, I'm just, you can see every time I scissor, I think I have it and then I comb and I don't. A traditional woodle face or doodle or oodle of any kind is like a long round mustache. And so you can see I'm just combing it straight down and doing a straight line. Now for eyes, I comb that mustache hair up like you just saw and then that point is what we're going to try to do. I'm right handed so I go up on the right and down on the left and again just be careful their eyes are right there. I'm going to use our wide tooth comb to comb the bangs forward. Now with this, you're going to cut a straight line. Now don't go all the way back because then when they look up, you're gonna have this really short hair right in front of the eyes. It's not gonna look good. So go a little bit longer at first. You can always take more hair off afterwards. And so you'll see here in a second, I'm gonna comb the hair up and you can see all those weird sticky outies. And so this is just like the beard. You're gonna comb it up, comb it forward, comb it to the side, and you're just gonna trim in a round rainbow shape and get all those sticky outies out of there. Look at our mess, we made quite a mess. Stand back from your dog, take a look, clip anything else that's weird, and you're done. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.